February 1st, 2023. Fans from around the world were waiting in anticipation for the London Land Split 1 playoffs set to begin just 24 hours later. But then the news broke. European powerhouse Fire Beavers was officially unable to attend the LAN. Но так получилось, что мы не смогли на него попасть из-за того, что нам не выдали до сих пор визы на данный момент. Мы все их еще ждем, и мы пропустили данное событие. Ну, грустить и унывать не надо, еще впереди будет много ланов, много турниров, поэтому сейчас насладитесь этим прекрасным видео. Rather than simply being denied access, the issue was instead one of time. The Split 1 playoffs land was not announced in regards to location and dates until December 21st, leaving qualified teams a little over a month to get their visas sorted. And for most competitors, the process was smooth, but for some, depending on their country of origin, would have difficulties getting approved in time. While the regions converged and the land was touted as the best teams in the world competing against each other, many couldn't help but feel the absence of Fire Beavers and the other teams who didn't manage to make it in time. Oi Rain put out a tweet stating, I won't be playing this LAN, but I hope to play the next one with everyone. And although it seems as though they took it on the chin at the time, it's rather clear based on their current level of play that it only served as motivation, and the recipient of the Revenge Tour has been the entirety of the EMEA region. And here we go. <laughs> Должна быть двойка, Кирю. Одно от нас. Киллис. Они пушат нас прям, пацаны. 50 сир справа. Они меня улынят, меня улынят, меня улынят. Меня улынят, помогите. Идем, идем, идем. Я красу у всех. Я все равно, все равно, все равно, все равно. Не ну-ка ты, ребят, дай сцепь, дай сцепь. Я ультую, слышите, я ультую. Давай, давай. Окей, окей. Нет, нет, нет. Поехал, мы уйдем на воду. Welcome back to the reset where today we will be dissecting Fire Beavers, one of the most exciting teams in the world to watch. But first, I want to thank Igor and Stalemate Bread. These two legends translated the Fire Beavers comms that you will see throughout the video. I truly could not have made this video without them. Absolute legends. If you haven't already, make sure to like and comment on the video and subscribe if you want to see more ALGS content. And I almost forgot, make sure to subscribe to Fire Beavers YouTube channel. I also was able to pull clips from there with the translations on there. They do a lot of awesome content and we always want to support orgs in Apex that are producing content. So go subscribe to them, follow them on all their social medias. Links will be in the description. Anyway, back to the video. So let's start with the basics. I want you to take everything that you think you know about competitive Apex or ALGS and crush it. Fire Beavers defies the usual logic of how Apex is meant to be played. The normal song and dance is a team chooses a POI, a comp that should fit that play style. Zone teams can be rather predictable as they move quickly and try to obtain God spot. Edge teams will take their time looting, get good stuff, and then try and fight their way in on a rather linear path. The common thread between these two teams, though, is predictability of the pace of play and the ways in which they will reach the end game. Usually, you can draw a straight line of how each team will go from point A to point B from their landing POI to the end game. But Fire Beavers, their pathing is rather absurd. To be clear, though, if they moved like this in every single game, then their unpredictability would become predictable. So here is a good example of another game where they take a rather straightforward path into zone and hold God spot. They're capable of both, and that's what makes them unpredictable. Anyway, this unorthodox way of moving around the map means that teams nearby need to constantly be aware of their presence because when Fire Beavers spots weakness, they pounce. Here's a perfect example from their most recent match day. Fire Beavers on Storm Point lands at Cenote Cave. Dynasty nearby was landing at Bean and extending towards 
treasure and the nut behind Mill. Dynasty lands this same way three games in a row. Notice anything? Tolkien is very far from his team, and Fire Beavers notice this too. The previous two games, they used Survey Beacon Scan early to notice the distance between the team, and in game three, they capitalize on it. In area, so picking up an early KP could be really nice, but this is equally as damaging if you're, if you're in the perspective of Dynasty. Meanwhile, Fire Beavers, they now get to inherit all of this loot with a nice easy transition down into the south side should they want it. I mean, Jayhawk said they're simply built different. And oh my gosh, that was my name on the main broadcast. But speaking of which, the tweet of mine that Spider Tiff is referencing there is in regards to overall points per game across the two maps. And this is where I need to interject a little bit here. This video was planning to come out before their fourth match day, but unfortunately there were some delays. The rest of this script was before that. And so all the stats that are going to be included in this video for the most part are going to be from their first three match days only. Some things have changed since then. I apologize. Bear with me. Anyway, as of their most recent match day, Fire Beavers averages over a 11 points per game on both maps. In the EMEA region, they not only average the highest placement per game, but they also average the most KP per game. And this is why if you follow me on Twitter, you continue to see me posting that Fire Beavers are built different. And per usual, we are here to discuss exactly how they've managed to achieve this level of excellence. Let's jump into their first of their three keys to success. The concept of being willing to exist within uncomfortable situations is one that many who excel in their individual field are acutely aware of. When trying to be the best at something, there will always be uncomfortable situations that arise, and this is no different in a game of Apex. You won't always get favorable zones, great loot, or good fights. And Fire Beavers are aware of this, so rather than settling for the best available, they will instead take the riskier option, but the high reward option that gives them the best chance to win the game. It's a risk versus reward mentality. Fire Beavers is willing to take large risks because they know that they can reap the rewards, aka big KP and a potential game win, if it pays off. Because of this approach, over the span of their time together as a team, there is no situation they are not comfortable with. The prime example of this is their willingness to sit in zone and use it to their advantage. Conceptually, in a battle royale, the playable area will continue to decrease in size, and in ALGS, Respawn has actively taken steps to prevent players from straying from that area. Heat shields do not exist in ALGS, and a few seasons ago across the entire game, they increase the speed at which the ring begins to close and the damage taken in those early rings. And yet across 24 games, Fire Beavers has taken 19,263 damage to the ring. This equates to about 800 ring damage per game. And this is notable because they will have minor shifts in their strategy to account for this. When they craft, they will often overcraft medkits compared to most teams. Now these medkits are crucial because although they might might not use them immediately, they now have the option to move freely throughout the storm if they don't like the rotation options presented to them later. This is also rather deadly for opposing teams. Many teams view the zone on their back as safe, but when fire beavers are in the lobby, there is an increased likelihood that you will get zone wrapped and be forced into an engagement with one of the deadliest teams in the world, which leads us to key to success number two. I know that the term fighting is rather broad, so let me break it down. Fire Beavers is arguably the best fighting team in the world. In a straight up 3v3 fight, there's a good chance that they could take out anybody. As of right now, Fire Beavers per game averages 6.63 kills. This is the most kills per game in the entire world. On a per match day basis, Oirain averages 14.75 kills, Nine Impulse averages 13 kills, and Taskmaster averages 12 kills per game. This is almost 40 kills a match day as an entire team. And I know that earlier I said that all of these stats were from the first three match days, but last minute addition, in their most recent match day, Fire Beavers had a rough showing placing 15th overall, yet they still led the entire lobby with 25 kills. Built different. Now anyway, based on those averages, each of these three players would be top five in kills per match day in any region in the world. And to add on to this, they are all mouse and keyboard players. Players love to complain about aim assist this, aim assist that, but Fire Beavers don't care about no robot helping you aim, they'll still outgun you. And final point to add, while watching their games, I noticed a distinct lack of a true IGL. I asked 9Impulse who exactly their IGL was, and
and he informed me that although he is the captain and he does speak quite often because he plays Bangalore, they don't have an IGL. In his words, he said, I'm not the IGL. No one IGLs. We play together. We talk together. Apex has changed and people need to adapt. Solo IGLing is not working. A lot of top fraggers are full of ideas or cool things that they can bring to the game. Who needs a silent bot? And this couldn't be more true in the case of Fire Beavers, and it's probably why they are so strong at fighting. When all three players are able to comp for teammates and contribute to the micro aspects of an engagement, it prevents an overall lack of information. One player can only see their limited view of a fight, but three players combined in unison elevates the collective vision of how to win. Because of this, Fire Beavers is able to to naturally fight in ways that many teams do not. While most teams act as three individuals, or in some cases extensions of a single individual who micros the overall team exclusively, Fire Beavers is able to fight as sort of a hive mind that can approach the problem with a much more complete solution. Very few teams from around the world have the level of chemistry and experience to successfully fight this way, but what separates Fire Beavers from the pack in this regard is key to success number three. Fire Beavers are the most flexible team in the world, and I don't mean in terms of running tons of legend compositions or styles like Xset has over the years, what I do mean by their flexibility is that they play in a way that creates options. In any form of competition, the existence of more options than your opponents will usually yield better results. Let's step away from Apex for a moment to explain. For this example, we're going to jump over to football, also known as soccer here in America, and this is a clip of FC Barcelona who... It's one of the best teams of all time, and this is specifically from when they were at their peak with Andres Iniesta, Lionel Messi, and many others. As you can see here, Iniesta has the ball in the midfield, and he has many options for who to pass to or what to do next. He could pass out wide to the winger, and he could do it on either side with a cross, a ground pass, something along those lines. He also has the space to potentially roam deeper over into the left. He could try to challenge the defender directly in front of him, or he could move it back to the right, or even walk behind to do some holdup play and allow for more players to get forward from the back line. And most crucially, he also has a couple passing options that are far more aggressive. Number one, we see Lionel Messi here. Obviously, he's defended already, but Iniesta has the opportunity to potentially push the ball over to the side and then squeeze in a pass between these two defenders as Messi moves in to fill the space. Or the play that Iniesta actually takes, which is this man right here, who crucially has beaten his defender and is not being looked at by this defender and has all this space to work with and all Iniesta has to do is fit the ball in right behind. Iniesta, Messi leaves it to Pedro! Real Madrid, Carl Dupin! Now, once again, the point of this is options. Pass to the outsides, hold up play for other attackers to join the fray, even attacking the defender, or, of course, passing through to Messi, or Pedro. Now, how does this relate to Apex Legends and specifically Fire Beavers? Fire Beavers are masters of maneuvering across the map, similar to Barcelona on the field. They place themselves in areas where multiple options exist. Even when they engage in fights, there are rarely moments where it's an all in or nothing kind of an engagement. And with so many teams that exist on the map at any given time, it is difficult to hold a constant advantage because you may have one over 15 teams, but four other teams may have one over you. Fire Beavers will identify the team with Godspot and they'll take it for themselves. Or they might be in a situation where there is no one true Godspot but they'll always figure out how to create one. And once again, relating to key number one, when no options present themselves, they'll just run back into the storm and find a better one. And today to show this off, we're gonna go over two games that show these three keys fantastically. And once again, huge shout out to Stalemate Bread and Igor for translating their comms. Before we jump in, let's take a look at a few of our translators notes. 
First off, he wrote down that these guys referred to each other as nicknames, and later in the document he wrote down that one of those nicknames is a very endearing nickname, and it just shows how close of friends these guys are. Next, he says that he could not identify any one person who was the IGL, which obviously we've already discussed, but he also added that each of them tend to IGL different things based on his observations. Impulse will IGL the overall macro rotations for early game, while Oiran and Task will co IGL. IGL combat and positioning, and then once they get into the late game, Oirain, as you'll hear later, becomes very vocal. Anyway, let's start with the first game of the entire split. Fire Beavers has a gravitational effect on any lobby that they're in. They're sort of similar to TSM in that regard. When they play, the entirety of Fragment is theirs. The circle is going to end up pulling towards Overlook, which means that Fire Beavers will have direct priority to this zone if they want to claim Godspot early. And they know this, as according to our wonderful translator, Taskmaster correctly predicts where the final zone will be, and then immediately says, which means... This is the funny part. Even our translator gets confused as to why Fire Beavers decides to rotate away from the circle. Naturally, most teams here grab God Spot and wait it out till the top five and then go for the win. According to our translator, they were playing on holding near the top of icicles outside of Epicenter and most likely attempting to gatekeep any teams moving in. They have this style where sometimes they'll just loot fragment and then sort of lurk around in the surrounding areas waiting for a team to show up to fight. But a team takes that spot from them early and they discuss fighting for it but then decide against it. Fire Beavers instead rotate towards Survey Camp to craft. This process is the mentality and flexibility I was referring to earlier. Fire Beavers keep every option on the table. They want this specific area and epicenter but table that decision for later. Rather than settling for another weaker spot and zone like many teams or pressing the issue now and potentially getting third partied, they're going to rotate away and ensure that they have better loot and then they'll come back later in the game. On their way to survey, they end up getting pressured and knowing that teams may be coming from behind them, they continue to move even further away from the circle into Skyhook and Craft. Imagine most other teams being put in this position. There is very few teams that would ever be comfortable enough to not rotate away from circle once, but twice all the way out to an edge POI that's not even close to where the circle's gonna end. Anyway, they craft up med kits and then resume the original plan and move back over to survey camp. As edge teams do in this current meta, they're gonna move into the top of epicenter and then use the survey beacon. And this is where things truly begin. They identify that a fight is taking place nearby the spot that they want to hold and they instantly pounce. Oh, Easy squad wipe in the truck, and notice how smooth they switch with each other. They immediately take both angles on the truck, and they get a clean wipe and reset. But then a third party arrives, and in this circumstance, we once again see that flexibility coming back into play. Some teams could be forced into a terrible fight or rotation here, but Fire Beavers are so comfortable and prepared for all possible options, and in that moment where they could have easily been eliminated in 18th, they manage to reset and storm and rip a Valkul that, albeit was a tad lucky, it ends up netting them God spot. And once they've secured this spot, they know that it's time to start to expand their area of control. Fire Beavers never hold a spot. Don't get me wrong, they will certainly maintain control of it, but they don't do it in a convenient conventional way. They don't bog down and gatekeep or poke from afar. Instead, they will constantly extend their reach from that spot they try to hold and attempt to create discomfort in the surrounding teams. They are masters at putting pressure on the teams nearby. And so they begin to do just that by first off clearing out their backs on the teams at the height near Overlook. And finally, we have reached the final circle. And I'm going to let the gameplay speak for itself. <laughs> Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Да, убил, 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 добить. Еще сзади, 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 я не знаю, Нету? посмотри. Это ТТшка, посмотри на ТТшку. Сейчас, сейчас, подожди. У меня патронов зачитай, нихуя зачитай. нет. Мне надо захилиться по-нормальному и залутать хотя бы свято. Лева, смотри, да, быстрее бикон. Лева, смотри, Нас быстрее бикон. Нашел бикон, нашел бикон. Э, коль, 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 быстрее. Я Армос... забыл у тебя Патриков чуть-чуть. Я армарсап скинул, Кирюк. Без... Я скакиваем туда. Я, я, я понял. понял. Да, а я на золотой бок. У вас дерутся. Ребята, вас дерутся на вагоне. На вагоне Ноки. Да, 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 беру. Не торопитесь, справа двойка, скорее всего. Нет, не двойк, нет. Я, я сразу беру, я я прихожу, да. Можно смог, я можно смог. Сюда. Я тут смока, Лев, связи. Я, я, я свапну, не, не я это. Я хилюсь на Лев, я да, хилюсь да. Лев. Лево смотри, Лев, лево сейчас Попробуй. может волкапнуть нас. Мне пули нужны, пиздец. Какие? Хавики. А, хавик, лайти и энерджи. На. Я право смотрю. На 50 хавиков. И лево пай сейчас будет. Лево, лево смотри. Лайты да, и энерджи, лайты и энерджи. Понял, да. я право смотрю, не даю его капнуть нас. Право, право надо смаковать, фул право смаковать. Слева да. пушат, слева. Нас на фоне зоны видно, на фоне зоны да, видно. Да. Слева крыша, смотри. Машина, машина, машина. У нас еще зона. машина есть, просто за машиной и левых кошмарим. Кошмарьте левых, мы за машиной будем прятаться. Пока не можем кошмарить. Смоков нету больше, 10 Окей. секунд. Я даю сюрик налево, я даю сюрик налево. Давай. Сейчас выходить будут, я хилю. У нас год спот. Ребят, лево пикает, лево, лево пикает, сломал, 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 я дам щит, я дам щит, за мной, за мной щит. Я не вижу, у меня нет дигитала. А мне, ко мне, ко мне, ко мне, упадите, щит даю, щит давай, даю, давай, ребята. Давай. Две двойки дерутся. А у меня нету кирюк, хилит, вообще хилит. патронов, лайтов скинь, если есть, лайтов, пожалуйста, нет патронов. Это моя лайта падает. Лайтов, 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 это двойка, это двойка, это двойка. Давай, 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 давай. Это сольник, это сольник. Валька, 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 крак. Гаси, гаси ее, Лёва, крак. Ай, блядь! Блять, ебу, ебучий случай нахуй. Ебучие нахуй. ублюдки, блять! Саша! <laughs> Insane clutch from Taskmaster. Crazy how it looks like he went for the armor swap initially, but then he misses it, and in that moment he doesn't hesitate or fumble, and instead he just continues to grab the vault, turn, and fire. That split second of him maybe trying to grab the armor swap after messing up could have given his opponent the chance to get the reload off and maybe one clip him from behind the knockdown shield. So fire beavers, they miss land, and despite not having played an ALGS match in months, come back with a vengeance and as I said earlier, this is the first game of the split and they get a first place 18 kill game, which nets them 30 points. Their next three games, they die in 11th each time, but they pick up 10 more kills. So through four games, we've got 28 kills on the board and 43 total points. And we finish off the last two games in Storm Point. The next game that we're gonna talk about is game five, where they're gonna rattle off another win with eight kills. That's gonna put them at 63 total points and 36 kills on the day. The game after that, they get another win with another seven kills, meaning they finish off the day in first place with 82 points and 43 kills. But first off, let's go back to that game five. We're going to jump into Storm Point, and this is interesting because unlike World's Edge, they don't land at the center of the map, but the macro doesn't actually change that much. As previously discussed, when on World's Edge, when they land in the center of the map, they don't do it like most other teams where they want to have easy priority to most zones. According to Nine Impulse, they like Fragment, but they are open to changing down the road for a better POI, so land teams, you better watch out. So although the macro is relatively similar on Storm Point, it is far more linear as oftentimes they'll need to travel long distances to get into circle, which is going to lead to a much more straight path. That said, when there are circles that are nearby, you can constantly see them once again doing that same thing where they negative rotate into zone to craft, 
go fight, whatever they want to do. Anyway, in this game specifically, the circle is going to pull towards North Pad, which is a decent pull for Fire Beavers as the plan of attack becomes rather simple. Clear out the left side of the map as you walk in. On their way in, they naturally do the armory and uh... Anyway, they begin to rotate out. They use the UAV to see the lay of the land and start discussing playable spots. And we get another random translator note here, but apparently the buildings that we in NA refer to as the nut, Fire Beavers call them Spongebob. Now, they do kind of look like pineapples, but it's it's just kind of funny that both NA, Fire Beavers, we, we have all these different strange names for these buildings. Anyway, the reason I'm showing this game is that it's a good example of what they do on that more linear pathway that we discussed earlier that doesn't always involve loads of fighting, but we still see that the game plan is the same. Regardless of how they must do it, Fire Beavers heavily prioritize crafting above all else. I would say that this is similar to Exet's prioritization of the survey beacons. They will divert their rotations based on this one thing. Crafting is so important to them because they know that eventually they will begin to engage heavily and although they are chaotic, they are not stupid. Ensuring red or near red armors is a rather large advantage that most other teams won't have, especially with how many teams in EMEA rotate quickly for zone. Fire Beavers is one of the few teams that will have this advantage throughout the game. And similarly, they will abuse survey beacons for information, although not to the extent of Exet, but it's the same premise. Oftentimes, when they use the survey beacon, the goal is for them to find the weak side of the map. Notice here, for example, they have the option to Valkult, and they even discuss it, but instead, they end up holding the open space on this left side. The reason? Well, there's really only one team that can threaten them here, and eventually, if given the chance, they'll wipe them and have this entire side of the circle to themselves. We fast forward quite a bit, they get a favorable zone pull, and this is where we see that these guys and their aggression is still controlled. Nine impulse suggests wiping the team on the cannon in front of them, but Taskmaster makes the smart call saying that there will be a team to walk up and third from behind. Yes, these three are a chaotic force in the lobby, but as we've seen so far in this game, they still know the right moments to pick the time and place to explode. Anyway, as the circle begins to close, they just continue to take space on their side of the map and allow the teams to engage. They poke from afar, and then finally, they end up getting the wipe in the end to get the win. <laughs> Although this game wasn't the classic super entertaining massive KP game from Fire Beavers, they still managed to get a first place win with 8 kills. So did you notice anything about these two games? They're very different. In one, they negative rotate multiple times, forego information for a fight, Falcult into center zone, and then they start expanding their area of control just to finally clutch it up in the end. And in the other, they take their time down a linear path to zone, they don't engage much, and they hold the edge of the final circle until they can get some clean wipes poking from afar. The point of showing game one was to show their ceiling. Fire Beavers are capable of dropping a nuclear game like we saw NRG or LG do on land, but they're also able to play it safe when when needed. I've seen many people wonder if Fire Beavers have what it takes to win a land due to their fighting nature. The comparison to Furia at Champs gets brought up a lot. Personally, I think they absolutely do. I'd encourage you to go watch that Game 5 in its entirety if you have doubts. They had so many opportunities to mindlessly int if they wanted to, 
but they didn't. They are certainly capable of going in guns blazing and taking out all these teams bunkered in these buildings in the middle of chaos, but instead they go for the win. And that's where I want to repeat something that I said earlier. Fire Beavers are willing to play in uncomfortable situations. They're willing to fight at risk of dying earlier than they should. They're willing to sit in zone and craft and accept the fact that they will be the last team in the circle. And they're willing to take a risk to secure the best chance to win. But that's the key phrase there, secure the best chance to win. While they are willing to do all of those things, they don't always. Like I said, this team is unpredictable. Erase whatever ceiling you have mentally placed on what Fire Beavers can accomplish. Because the one thing I truly learned from this deep dive into Fire Beavers is that anybody who has placed any sort of ceiling on what they're capable of is wrong. And that's the genius behind Fire Beavers. You never know what they're going to do next. And if you want to see a breakdown on Fire Beavers' biggest competition for the next LAN, click right here. Let's fucking go. Let's fucking go, guys. Smack that. All on the pole. Smack that. Give me some more. Smack that. Oh, oh, oh. Seriously, click it.